The day has finally arrived for house hunting in Querétaro, round two. Yes, I am looking to buy a house here, still considering Ajijic though, but after seeing some links and pictures, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to take a look inside these houses for real. Let's go. So this lovely house is located in Jardines de la Hacienda. It's a four bedroom, three and a half bathroom for 4,500,000 pesos. First of all, right now you can see that I'm standing in the living area. It has a functional fireplace, an all wood bar, I love this. To me, there's there's some things that give it like an older look, but the house itself is only 25 years old and they remodeled a bunch of things, he said, two years ago, I believe. Right when you walk in the door, you have this nice office space. It could technically be used as a guest room, but it doesn't have a closet. And then right across the hall, you have the guest bathroom, which looks pretty nice. Next, we walk right up here to this very large dining room area. As you can see, it has a, what is this? eight no six yeah eight eight chairs here a very statement kitchen i've said this before and i'll say it again i don't understand the obsession with like this powerful red accent cabinetry then we walk out here to this lovely outdoor space i so love this it's all covered it's got these pillars he said that you can even put a pool over here if you wanted to it could support that here's what this side of the house looks like and so then of course you've got you can have a barbecue grill, another grill over there, and some counter space. From the kitchen, in addition to all this cabinet space, there is a pretty big pantry. I always love that because it's like, where am I going to put all my snacks? I have so many snacks. I'm a snack addict. A sna snack dick? No, not that. Um, here would be the service quarters, maids quarters, or maybe just use it for storage. And then outside of here, this is where you could have a washer or washer dryer stacked. I believe he called this a complete bathroom, but this might be the most smushed up bathroom I've ever seen because the shower is like literally, well, okay, I'm just squeeze through here. The shower is like in the middle of everything. So you're showering on top of the toilet, and the sink, but I guess you just leave the door open and it'll air dry eventually. Moving on, we're going to head upstairs because this is a two-story house. I love this. You can look down here and see all of the living room and these big vaulted ceilings. And so I know what you might be thinking. I said this is a four bedroom place. For a single person such as myself, what am I gonna do with four bedrooms? Well, let me show you what the possibilities are. First, we have the master bedroom. And in all of these, you have these slit windows for airflow. It has its own complete bathroom, nice big closet and shower and sink with actual storage. Across the hall, we have the last three bedrooms which all share a bathroom right here. So this one is big enough that it could have a king size bed or two doubles. It's got a nice big closet. Of course, you gotta love all the natural light. And from here, I actually think, yeah, all of these are frosted windows, which means you don't actually have a view of anything, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I also don't know what I think about doors that have these slits in them because noise privacy <laughs> anyway the next bedroom is slightly smaller um, I still think it looks like you could probably fit a queen or like a, a double bed in here it also has uh, tons of closet space once again you've got all these windows here at least I like that they're floor to ceiling so you do get a bunch of natural light pouring in and last but not least we have this room which could be kind of like a gym space an office and you've got these great windows and closet space. You have this last bathroom. So it's your basic bathroom, but I think it looks very functional and the shower space is actually pretty large as well. Oh, and this whole space that I walked through here, he was saying obviously this could be used as like a TV area um, or like for games. You might even be able to put a pool table here or something like that. The location is really nice as well. Pretty close to a lot of stuff, but it's not like right in the hustle and bustle of downtown. It is one downside right by a freeway, which you can kind of see, where you can kind of hear, I mean, when you go out here. By the way, it also has a three car carport garage area. Freeway's right over there, which means you 
kind of get a little bit of that noise. It also has this doorbell system with a security camera, so that would be nice. I can screen whoever's knocking on my door and decide whether I want to answer or not. Ha. The terrain or the, the plot of land itself is 225 meters squared. The house construction is 285 meters. So it is a relatively big house, especially for, like I said, just for one person. But I think I could do a lot with those rooms. One could be an office, one could be a guest room, one could be a gym, and I would just live a merry, happy life. <laughs> So I also did want to show the street that this house is on though. It's a very wide two-way street, but super quiet. Like hardly any cars are coming up and down. That's where the freeway is. There are a lot of really good things about this neighborhood. I was told there's a park that's really close, close to a couple shopping centers. I am a big, big fan of this house. This is gonna be a huge consideration for me. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button to see more about my life and traveling in Mexico. And also I will eventually be showing what the process looks like to buy the house and everything, the nitty gritty details there. Okay, I'm technically not allowed to show this house, but since I'm walking out I might as well turn the camera on so you could see a little bit of it including this living room area up here but unfortunately I can't go up and show the additional three levels and rooftop terrace but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it anyway okay so really 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 this was one of the most unique houses I've ever seen with its different levels the cistern was underneath the living room area for the pantry you have to like kind of crawl in a hole but that's also where you could put the refrigerator four bedrooms there are two how many hold on yeah, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, 61 meters squared land, but 177 meters squared of the actual construction. So they really built up with this place. It's about 40 years old, so there would be some significant improvements that I need to, you know, significant changes that I would need to make to it, like taking care of some water damage, ripping up some old carpets, probably replacing the, I think it's called laminate floors, the tippy tappy floors, which I hate. Also, it is 4,200,000 pesos which I think is a little bit high for everything that needs to go into it. However, it is located in Centro, walking distance to pretty much everything in the historic center. So I could also rent it out on Airbnb. So it's definitely a house I'd consider. Super wish I could have showed it to you. Sorry that I couldn't. Before I go on, I want to introduce my real estate agent, Monica. Hi. Who is a little bit camera shy. So I want to just, just say, if you're interested in any of the houses that I showed today, obviously I cannot buy all of them contact her. I will leave uh, Monica's information down below in the description. So I'm now in the neighborhood called Calesa, which is very similar to others that I've seen, although I've never been here before. And I like it. It's pretty quiet, close to Centro, close to the freeway. This very nice and very well-maintained house is 3,400,000 pesos. However, unfortunately, I cannot record this three bedroom, three bathroom, one level house at 150 square meters because the owner is still living here and she's by herself and doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, exposing herself to any type of risk of you know seeing the photos in the background of the video and I totally respect that because I'm also constantly concerned about my safety <sighs> Okay, so we definitely ran into some hiccups today with not being able to record a couple of the properties and one of them canceled But tomorrow I'm gonna be seeing at least two I think three possibly four properties so stick around, because it's not over yet. So, <laughs> welcome to day two of round two of house hunting here in Querétaro. I am extremely excited to show you this next house because it might be my favorite. This is in the uh, freaking oh, drew a blank there for a second. This is in the Calesa neighborhood, which I did see one other house and I really fell in love with how quiet and tranquila it is. So this is a three bedroom, three bathroom, two story place and Oh my gosh, let's just let's just dive right in. Currently, I'm standing in the master bedroom. It has its own balcony over this way. It's got a shower, the sink area, missing a mirror, and the furniture that you're gonna see is not included. Um, a more secluded toilet area, a massive walk-in closet. This could literally be a room. So coming in here, as much closet space as you could ever want, and a window for natural light. I don't know, is this for shoes, for pants? I'm not sure, but like, look at how spacious this is. <laughs> Amazing. We are on the second story right now. It actually has its own terrace, which I think is a pretty rare feature that I've seen in Querétaro. So you've got the barbecue area there. He's saying you can put TV up there so you can watch sports games or movies or whatever you want. This space over here could actually be turned into a studio. Like knock down this wall and 
build something on top of that. Ah, I just love me a good terrace. Coming downstairs, well first you've got a place to put some plants. These gorgeous wooden beams with tons of natural light. And we'll come down to the bottom floor. Believe it or not, this bedroom here, which has got a gorgeous big window, this looks out to the garage area. It has such a big closet. Tons of closet space, tons of storage, even more right here, and more right here. And I'm just gonna back right up into the shower area, toilet behind here. But I thought this was the master bedroom. I thought this was the main bedroom, and it's not. <laughs> then you also have, if I come over here, another bedroom. They said they left the wooden floors in this one because it could be like a kid's room, so it's not as important to have the tiles, I don't know. Um, this also looks out to the garage. It has its own closet. This bedroom would have this hall bathroom, the guest bathroom, back here. And they said they didn't really know what they wanted to do with the enclosure of this, so I would have to of course, construct some type of glass or curtain or something. Um, also mentioned, didn't come with any toilet seats, which is kind of odd, but all the lighting fixtures stay. Underneath the stairs here is this cave, which goes all the way back there. So lots of storage space if I needed it. And they kind of have this set up as like a little lounge area, reading area. The living room, it's pretty interesting. It's like sunken down. These are built-in couches. You lift up the cushions underneath and there's storage underneath all of these. It has a decorative fireplace and then this opens right up to the dining area and then a social outdoor lower patio terrace. I think I would put in tons more plants. I would make this actual grass and probably plant some more stuff. And then we can come in here to the living room. So it's got like a peep through bar top, which I think maybe you could put chairs on this side, but it definitely lends itself more to having some bar stools here. Brand new stove, um, brand new countertops. The only kind of bummer about the kitchen is that, well, actually the, this big pantry, not a bummer at all, but the fridge would have to go here. So I would probably change this door situation because I don't know how you would really, you have to like close yourself in here, get stuff out of the fridge, and then, I don't know, it seems kind of like a pain in the patootie, but um, that's kind of an easy fix. I do love the flow of this kitchen. It's spacious enough, opens up to the living room so you can kind of entertain and I don't know, I could serve people their drinks and their snacks and all that. Then we come out here and this comes through from this outdoor patio area to the maid's quarters, service room. So I would put a washer and dryer here and there's just so many dead cockroaches right now, but I don't want to go in. <laughs> I'll show you anyway. Okay, so you would put like the bed over top of all these cucarachas and then you have the shower and sink and toilets. I was told though that it's just because nobody's been in the house for about three weeks, so uh, that happens. That happens, but I would spray and spray and spray and spray and try to save myself. <laughs> Overall, I cannot believe how much I actually love this house. I mean, from the pictures, I knew it was gonna be a charmer and it totally is. The other great thing that Monica pointed out was if I wanted to, say I wanted to rent out this entire bottom space, I could just close off the stairs and then my space is private. So then nobody's able to, nobody's gonna access the master bedroom and my closet or anything like that. So, ooh, so appealing. Also, I'm going to come outside here and show, which I kind of already did, garage area, which he said would fit a, a normal size car and a much smaller car. So this is the most expensive house that I've looked at so far here in Querétaro at 4,950,000 pesos. And like I already said, it's a three bedroom, three bathroom, two story with a terrace. 250 meters squared, I think. And that doesn't say whether that's the construction or the total space. Also, the, the house is only 10 years old and it's in such a quiet neighborhood. Uh, we had to wait outside a little bit for the owner to come and 
not a lot of traffic coming through, no real like any no like noise, Mexican, your typical like vendors or uh, dogs barking or anything like that. So I am pretty in love with this place. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did notice in a couple places throughout the house that like in this case, I'm not really sure if this is water damage or something. They said that when they redid the roads outside that it caused, you know, the big machinery that they were using caused some things to shift. But if I bought this house, I would definitely get a inspection person in here to check and make sure none of this was structural. So I'm now going to be looking at this house in the neighborhood of Querétaro called La Joya, which is very close to Jardines de la Hacienda. And this is going to be a four bedroom, two and a half bathroom, two, Technically three levels. I'm gonna have to show you what I mean And this one is one of the lowest prices that I've seen for a house of all the ones that I've seen at 2,780,000 pesos and on this listing it says negociable and I was talking to Monica about this and basically it means they're probably maybe in a rush to sell or they're very open to offers so Okay, so first of all, this house is haunted. I'm just kidding. <laughs> first of all, I'm standing in the kitchen here. It's got this nice little bar top area. I don't think actually, I mean, it has storage, but um, you kind of really couldn't put bar stools here because there's no space for it to go under. Lots of wood, lots of storage. You've got this outdoor space here. The washer and dryer would go there. The refrigerator would go right here. This opens right up to this very large living room, dining room area. So I think right here would be the dining room. Um, maybe this used to be like, they had like a china hutch here or something like that because I don't know why they would leave this wood and do the, the different tiles here, but um, living room here and then this. Ooh, that was the wind closing those doors. This opens right up to the garage. It's actually a two car garage. So here you see one part of the garage and the other one over there. Then I'm going to walk right over here. But this opens up to, they said the previous owner used this as like a cantina. And this actually opens up for natural light and airflow. So then we can head on upstairs. I'm going to pass by this half bathroom. So a tiny little sink here. Exactly what you would expect a half bathroom to look like, I think. <laughs> so then let's go upstairs. All throughout the house, you're gonna see wood, 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 so much wood, uh, complemented by brick. Here's what I mean about interesting and kind of dated in a way. This house is only 18 years old, I believe she said, but there's features like this where I'm like, this opens up to a bedroom. So you've just got like a peephole into the bedroom. Uh, wooden floors, wooden accents, wooden doors, wooden closet, wooden walls. I hope if I get this place, I really, really like wood. I'm not sure if I would, uh, but it, I, I'm real, I am considering this because I like some of the charming details. Tons of closet space with, oh, you guessed it, wooden backed, wooden backed closets. From here, you can look up and see, there's a balcony which I'll show, and then this looks down to the little patio area. Coming out here, more wooden accents. And this bedroom is a little interesting because apart from, you know, you've got the closet, the bedroom itself, you have a sliding glass door to a not outdoor space. I'm not entirely sure if this would be an office or maybe a workout room, but you do have this nice patio, a uh, little tiny, it's a small patio, but I am never going to say no to a patio. I love the outdoor space. So from here, uh, these two bedrooms are going to share this bathroom. It has a decent looking shower space and um, small sink, but at least it has storage. I cannot stand when houses have those pedestal sinks because then you can barely put a toothbrush there and where are you gonna set all your other stuff? Where are you gonna store everything? <laughs> so, this is odd, I find a little odd. This is the master bedroom. Like You would have to put your bed in here. Here's the, the closet, which is, as far as master bedrooms go, not the biggest closet. Here's the bathroom, similar to the other one. And then there's these sliding glass doors to this area, which I was told the previous owner was a teacher. 
So he taught classes in here. So obviously that's why I got all this storage. I just don't really see the functionality in, in like the master bedroominess. So I would probably take out this door and if it was possible, that wall to make the master bedroom more of a master bedroom. Maybe even all this storage, even though, I mean, it's nice looking storage. <laughs> Here's another area for... To be honest, I don't know what. I don't know what you would put here. A chair? A reading chair probably? A lounge chair? That's what I can see. It is cool. These windows are massive. And you can see out to the street here. You can see the neighborhood. Very quiet street. Even the like pit bull, scary looking guard dog didn't bark at us, so uh, that's pretty cool. And then we see these stairs here. This is this is interesting to me. Let's go up here carefully. So these stairs just get tinier and tinier as you go up. <laughs> if I can balance here with holding this camera. And you have this is either. She said it's a bodega, but this seems like a loft to me. Like, you could probably make some modifications, add a closet. The bed could go here, maybe this would be the maid's quarters. You even have these windows here, so... If it was a bodega, I don't know why you'd need a window. And once again, you can see from here, the neighborhood, and all these other houses. The last detail I want to mention, now that you've seen the whole place with me, is that it's on 112 meters squared of land, and the house itself is 206 meters squared, which probably comes from all these many layers throughout the house. So I'm curious to know, what do you guys think of this place? Like, is it way too much wood? Would I be unhappy if I bought this? Would I not love the master bedroom? <laughs> I'd also like to glass you what you think of the sliding doors or the, the peephole here. <laughs> this next house I'm going to be looking at is in the Alamos neighborhood, which has been historically one of my favorite neighborhoods in Querétaro. Right now we're four-wheeling it a bit because they're redoing all the roads in this area. This house is a three-bedroom, three-and-a-half bathroom. It's going for 4,200,000 pesos on 250 meters of terrain and 169 meters squared of construction. Obviously, you can tell I'm on this very spacious backyard terrace area, which I would love to put a patio table and chairs, lots of plants. If I have a dog, this would be a great space for, um, for them. We're gonna walk right into the primary bedroom. Like the last one, I feel like this is a little on the small side for being the master bedroom, but it is what it is. Then we go right in here to this walk-in closet, uh, which has tons of storage space, and it is very walk-in. Some closets are called walk-in, but they're not really. Uh, it has its own bathroom, of course. Not really sure when I look at this why there's only one sink when there's space for two. And I don't know much about the construction, but I bet I could put another one in there if I wanted to. Although I would probably be living by myself to start out. So anyway, um, toilet, shower, uh, natural light coming in. I love that. We're gonna walk through here to the main area. Got some light coming in here. This would be the living room. Very, very spacious. You could have a giant table for like eight or nine people and a big couch. And also for entertaining, you can come right here to the kitchen. We've kind of got this island. It's not really a bar because there's cabinetry on this side, so you can't like, you know, can't put bar stools there. Uh, he said it was somewhat newly remodeled with the countertops is the newest thing. I don't know. I can tell this is a little, the cabinetry is a little on the cheap side because this is like particle board, but I think that might be easy to to swap out if I wanted to. And has a big enough space here for, he said, a double refrigerator and a hookup for water. That's really awesome. Outside here, we'd have the washer and dryer. And then this might be one of the biggest maid's quarters that I've seen. Like you could probably fit a double bed in here. And usually I'm always like, can you even fit one bed? <laughs> How are they gonna sleep? And this one has a closet as well. And the pretty standard size bathroom that you'd see. So this I think could even be more like a guest house. So coming back in through here, then we have the three other bedrooms. We've got one, two, and three. These are basically twin size bedrooms. So I'm only gonna show you one of those. 
but you come in and it's got lots of closet space. He's at this kind of like shabby chic look. I'm not really a fan of this style, so maybe I would paint it, maybe I would replace it, I don't know. And although the floors do look nice, they're a little bit of like what I call the tippy tappy floors because they're sort of like hollowish, not hollow, but not on a like super solid base so nice big window for natural light it looks right out to this patio area though both of these have these windows and they share this one bathroom which has a nice shower again with the natural light coming in and go around the corner here and this would be more like a tv room game room uh some office probably be in my office actually because there's no closet, but it has a view out to the garage here. So you see two car garage, it could be a three car garage. And then it has got its own half bathroom. It does have these really big double doors so that you can move in furniture, big furniture very easily. This is what this outdoor space looks like. So like I said, this could be maybe a three car. So all in all, I think this is a really appealing option. And normally the construction would be like, ooh, that's probably a deal breaker. But in this case, it does have an end date. He said it's probably gonna be like two, three more months of this. And it's for the betterment of the community, new sidewalks, new streets. Um, so I'm actually all about that. Another thing I wanted to mention, which I completely forgot to on the first house, is privacy. Even in this back area, these walls are so high and you can't, nobody can see in. None of the neighbors can see anything from any direction. And that was the same case with that first house, so I never have to be like, is anybody peeping in the windows? What if I happen to want to run from the shower to my bedroom or something like that? Um, don't have to worry about that at all. And so one block away from that house is this really gorgeous area with a median. You can walk out here, but mainly it's just a quiet area along both of these streets. And then one more block over is the main street that goes through Alamos. And that has all the, the restaurants and cafes and like salons and shops and a bunch of other stuff. So that's another great feature about the house super walkable. This house I'm standing in has got to be one of my favorites that I've seen for all of its unique features. I couldn't even believe it as I was walking through. So we're looking at a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom for one, sorry, 4,190,000 pesos. If I said that right, yep. <laughs> 250 meters squared of the land itself, 305 meters squared of the construction, uh, my brain is just swimming in all these numbers, so I keep having to refer to the notes. And uh, let's take a look. So right now where I'm standing is the living room, which has a functional fireplace, this window that looks out to the entryway, and a bar over here with, <laughs> it looks like it even used to have, you know, the, the classic like flip thing. What do you call that? The hatch countertop or whatever. Um, you've got the space for wine glasses place for bottles, uh, salts, and whatever else. But then, this opens up to a legit, kind of creepy wine cellar. Look, like, I'm scared to go back in here a little bit. What's gonna be here? <laughs> Nothing, actually, but uh, you can store all of your wine. How cool is that? <laughs> oh, this would be such a great space for entertaining. So then we're gonna walk out from the living room area to this entryway, a really large entryway with your guest bathroom. So got some storage under there, sink, two big mirrors and toilet, hall closet storage here. And then just to mention the family is moving out right now so they have things everywhere, but I can still imagine the possibilities. So this is a, I think the smallest room could be an office, could be a guest bedroom because plenty of closet space. And then it looks out here to the garage area. I believe this is like a four car garage and it's partially covered, which in the summer in Querétaro, that is a big deal. So moving on, we're gonna come in here to what I think would be considered the dining room area. Super large, you could have a nice big table in here. Love the wooden beams, super dig it. Um, and I know like throughout this house, there's so many, like the color choices, this, these pink accents, then come into the kitchen. We've got the blue cabinets, the blue countertops, which go with the blue uh, stained glass type of thing. And also up here with the lights. 
I would pick a different color, but I appreciate that it's a statement. It's very unique. And then over here, we've got the pantry, large pantry. And then one of my favorite parts of this house, although there are many, is we come out here to, we try to come out here to, oops, heavy. This gorgeous outdoor terrace patio space. And so he, from here you can see that's a bedroom, that's a bedroom, that is a uh, hallway that I'll show you, and that's actually a closet. So total privacy back here. I don't think anywhere neighbors could see you or any, well, I don't know what that building is over there. Maybe some people can spy on you down here, but I would fill this son of a up with plants and table and chairs and who knows what other fun things. Then back here is the service quarters. So I put washer and dryer. Then in here is the, uh, you know, maids quarters. So that's how they have it set up and little closet space and a pretty typical maids quarters bathroom. I just don't, like, I seriously have not seen it elsewhere in Mexico as commonly as maids quarters are here in Querétaro. Almost every house has one. And then I was pretty surprised to see across the way you have this laundry room, also storage, bodega, multi-purpose room. This house is has no shortage of space, storage space, closets all over the place, which I love that because, well, not that I have that much stuff, I really don't, um, but I could have the option to have a lot of stuff. <laughs> now, let's go on upstairs. Bum, ba -da -da. So, this is my second time seeing this today. Built-in couches, which is, I don't know how I feel about it, honestly, um, but I love this space. So this was obviously set up as some type of like TV room, um, entertainment area, Look at this Bovera ceiling. And this is a, oh, in Ajijic I learned what it was called when it was a Bovera, plus it had that thing up there. I'll put it on the screen, I can't think of it. <laughs> and then this looks out here to this, uh, this living room area where you can also see these skylights. Oh, totally passed by these ones. So you've got these beautiful wooden beams up here. Oh man, I just love it. <laughs> then you've got the bathroom for the two bedrooms. So toilet, sink, this is where you can kind of see like these type of things. You really sort of see the age of the house, even in here, I mean the tiles. One thing that it, it's, I see this everywhere in this house, which they do say they're gonna take care of, is salitre. So that's when water is coming through here, I'll show you. Moisture is coming through the walls, or you can see it up here in the Boveda ceiling, um, or over here. Basically, it's just bubbling through and causing this like texture because of the minerals and stuff, but they say they're gonna go through and paint everything. They're actually in the process of painting and then scrub that down or somehow take care of it. But anyway, here is the larger of the two secondary bedrooms. Got two big windows to let in natural light. You can see down here to the patio and it's got its own closets and those lovely wooden beams going across, which the wood looks to be in really great shape. And then this is the second bedroom, which has these corner windows. I think that's pretty cool. Also the wooden beams and these very antique looking fixtures, its own closet. And I had to point this out when we were in here the first time. This is when I was like, how old is this house anyway? It's about 25 years old. And I feel like this is a feature that gives that away. I mean, many of them do in this house, honestly, but uh, the tiles kind of outlining what size bed you would put in. Like I said, I don't know, maybe I'm a weirdo, but I love these things because it just, there's like history to it. So anyway, moving on to the master, the primary bedroom. Here we have, this is storage space. You would think, wow, for the master bedroom, that's not a lot, but wait, there's more. But first, a balconcito. And she was like, where you could receive a serenata. And I was like, ooh, a girl can dream. And check this out. 
Here we've got the one sink, the bathroom, which I would definitely do some, I would make some improvements, change this a bit. This is gonna blow your mind, because I was like, what? <laughs> you have a walk-in closet, so sliding doors on both sides, all this space. But then you go through this hallway, and this is where you can see also down to the patio area, to another, what looks like it could be a bedroom, but it's even more closet. So this is big enough where I'm like, well, do I make this my office? Could this be some other type of room? I would totally brainstorm it, but seriously, I love this house. The only thing that sort of is a question mark for me is the location. Compared to Calesa or Carretas or Jardines or Alamos, this is so much closer to all the like, the, the traffic of the freeways. I mean, it is nice that there's this park right outside here. It's close to Costco, shopping centers, and it is by the freeway, which means easy freeway access. But I think I would prefer to be more in like a neighborly, quieter, more set back area. From inside here, I will admit you can't hear a ton of traffic noise, but you can still hear it. And that wasn't the case in some of the other ones that I looked at, like the one in Alamos or um, Calesa. But how can you, I mean, look at these floors, the chimney, the bar, oh. This is gonna be, oh, this is such a tie between a few of the houses that I've seen. And last but not least, we're gonna come out here and see another view of this garage. So I think really one, two, three, four. I feel like you could put four, uh, four cars here. And it's covered, automatic gate. And here you can see that's the one office-y type bedroom. That's the primary bedroom. Here's the living room. I love that it has this tree and these plants the secure entryway and it even has this outdoor bodega what do you guys think what do you think of this house i have so much to think about now <laughs> well i can honestly say that house hunting is both extremely fun and exciting and also very stressful and exhausting on the same end i'm sure many people could relate if you have any questions about this experience please let me know down in the comments i hope you'll subscribe to my channel to see more videos on the screen here is the last video i made house hunting in queretaro also house hunting in ajijic in case you want to see what uh, the prices are in another city and one more thing before you go <laughs> gong that bell if you want to get notified the next time i release a new video and i hope to see you there